Okay guys, I'm going to be making a video today on beginner builds or the best ways to start your game and kind of advance through um, in a good way that helps you level up and kind of progresses you through each uh, enemy tile a little quicker. So the first thing I want to go through is the skill tree. Um, after this I'm going to go through weapons and, and those sorts of things, but let's begin with the skill tree. I want to go over what I think are some of the best uh, skills to get and acquire early on. Um, when I first started the game, I started just kind of building up uh, right around the, the center point here. So I got health regen, um, I got this movement speed, um, and after, after I got that far, um, I started to try to figure out what I wanted to do. And originally, actually, uh, I was looking at this movement speed, and I thought that that is what made you attack faster. Um, because I was attacking pretty slow. Um, it just felt like every time I would attack, it would have a really long charge time. Um, so I didn't really know that what I really wanted to get was down here. kind of looks like a... I, I always kind of look at it as an envelope but um, because I think it kind of looks like an envelope but anyway uh, you want this attack charge time so I think when you start the game you attack really slow but I think one of the first things that you want to make your way towards is getting this attack charge speed and what that's gonna do is that it's gonna decrease the amount of time that it takes to attack so you might be attacking once every three seconds um, Whereas when you have all of the attack charge time uh, skills filled in, your attack time is going to be 0 0.03 seconds, or your charge time at least. So, so you're attacking so much faster, and that makes a huge difference. So the first thing that I would recommend is to try to make your way towards uh, this Falcon Agility Circle. Um, so that's my number one. Uh, my number two spot is going to be HP regen. So that's going to be right above the starting point. Um, located around this unnatural recovery here. It's going to be the the red cross. The reason I find this helpful is for two reasons. One, if you do end up taking damage during a battle and you can heal, you know, a few hit points every second, that's going to be a lot better than having to fight really easy enemies. Um, the other thing too is if you die Sometimes it can be a pain if you have to wait a really long time before you can actually get back to 50% health so you wake up and can start fighting. So if you're, let's just say you're at, you have 100 health and your health regen is 0.5 a second, okay? It's going to take you, what, 100 seconds to get back up to 50 health where you can start fighting again. Whereas if you have a 5 second um, health regen, it's going to be... 10 seconds, right, to get back up. And so what that kind of does is, that's just kind of like a, a thing that I found annoying is when I did die, how long it took. And so I wanted to make sure my health regen uh, was up. And it, it, it is really helpful to, to uh, heal from any damage that you take. Um, so after this one, what I like to do is, I think what I went to after this was power, which is the fist. And the reason I went to do this one, centered around the mana focus, is because power affects your magic, your range, and your combat. And so I thought that, well, if I'm attacking, I want to increase my power. Because if I can attack, then maybe I don't have to defend. Because if I'm able to kill the enemy before they're able to attack me, then I don't even have to worry about any sort of uh, defense or armor. Um... Now after, honestly, after you get the movement speed down or the attack times charge, attack charge time, um, that's going to completely change your game. And the way that you go about filling in your skill tree after you get this is totally going to change because you become so much more powerful um, because you can attack maybe 10 times faster than you could before and it completely makes your power and your skill so much better against enemies. But so my first three are going to be attack charge time, 
HP regeneration and power. Um, after this, uh, if you notice, there's no circles, large circles for combat or range. Um, and so, but there are a lot of the tiny circles that you can fill in. So you could, if you want, you could go around and try to find all the the circles for combat and range. You see in the upper left hand, there's combat, and I believe down below here, there's ranged. Yep. Um, so those are always good. Um, also, you can do in line with this is you can do the armor and defense. So that's going to be the armor looking thing on the left and the shield on the top right. Both of those are good to fill in, um, especially as you're taking damage. It's going to really help to minimize that. Um, at a lower level, it might even be more effective because if the enemies are only dealing 10 damage and your shield protects, let's just say, 5 damage, uh, you know, that's going to be a huge percentage. Later in the game, when your enemies are doing 200 damage and you're only defending 5 damage, you know, that's not as effective. But early on, that stuff can be helpful. Um, and then the last thing that I think is helpful is the critical chance and the critical multiplier. Uh, the reason these are good is because it's just going to be a way to boost your damage. Um, now, the ones that I would stay away from, especially early on, if you can look at my skill tree, I've got this uh, manner regeneration, magic, and um, well, this is max uh, mana. Um, those three I would totally stay away from, especially early on. If, if you can see, I mean, I've only filled those in because I've filled out everything else to the left. The reason these aren't needed is because early levels, you're not really going to need any of them. Even at high levels right now, I'm not using any of them. Um, the other thing which might be easy to grab is health. Um, health is right there at the start, it's easy to get, but in my opinion, I do not think that health is very useful, and here's the reason why. I think that if you have a good man uh, health regeneration, as well as good shield and attack and everything, health really isn't going to do anything, because if you're farming, the way that you farm is that you're not gonna you're gonna be farming someone that you're not gonna be losing health on. So let's go back to this example. If you have a hundred health and you're fighting an enemy, but you're able to fight him and never lose health, like maybe you lose five health every attack, but you gain that back before he attacks again, you're always gonna be around ninety five to hundred health. Now if you have the same thing but you have a thousand health, it's gonna be the exact same thing. You might be fighting between 995 health and 1,000 health. Um, so really, relatively speaking, health, when you're farming, you're always going to want to have max health. So it doesn't matter how high it is. So I think health is an easy one to avoid at the start. Even though it seems easy to get, I don't think it's very important. Um, something else I want to mention is that you are able to reset your skill tree. If you click on your center character, um, I've already reset mine because um, I made that mistake of doing movement speed instead of attack charge time. But if you click on the center, there should be a button that says reset your path. And that is going to be helpful if you want to do that and kind of follow along with these steps. So those are the main skills. There are I, Now I want to go over five kind of mini skills, I guess, uh, the smaller circles that I think are really important as well. Um, this one here, let me just try to zoom in here a little bit. Um, this one here, Crit Master. Uh, this one I found really helpful. Uh, what you have to do, though, is you have to get your... If you're using combat, you need your combat level at 50 or above. And if you're using range, you need your range at level 50 or above. But what this does is it allows you to automatically hit critical attacks. And for me, this was just a way to speed up the game because every time you were about to hit a critical, you'd have to tap the screen, you know, in order to do the critical. But when you do Crit Master, it automatically does that. And so uh, it takes away some of the time that you're using to fight an enemy. Another one that I thought was useful is over here is, let me go a little further is right here and this one is called onrush and so this is 
charge the attack during the enemy search. So especially if you have a slow charge time, when you're searching for an enemy, your attack is going to charge. So essentially, uh, normal chart, normal uh, search time I think is four seconds around there. And so when you finally find that enemy, the idea is that your first attack is already going to be charged. So when that monster comes in, boom, you're going to attack him. Um, and that can really help too to get a little a little boost um, ahead of the enemy. The other one I think is good is Hunter. Hunter says search for an enemy twice as fast. So this changes from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. And this is just one of the things to speed up your game a little bit, especially farming. Um, let's say you can uh, let's say you can one hit an enemy when you're farming, okay? And that charge time or the search time goes from four seconds to two seconds. I mean, you're looking at like almost twice as many enemies. Not not quite, but the point is it's going to really speed up your game. Uh, another one that I really like is this one that looks like a range or a sword and a bow together this is something that i got later in the game um, if you notice there's no as i mentioned there's no circles for range and combat but i think this dual talent kind of makes up for that and what it does is it increases both combat and range by eight percent of the opposite so if if my uh combat and range are both at level 50 and i have this on uh, my combat and range are then going to go up 4 points because 8% of 50 is 4, so that basically increases my combat and range by 4 points. And so what this does is, this is, this is really good because it's going to increase your power overall. And so this is what I got later in the game, um, just as a way to kind of do more DPS. And then the last one I like, the fifth and final, is Dash. And so this doubles the movement speed for the first three seconds of battle. And I had a, I have a previous video kind of talking about this um, and how movement speed is really good against ranged enemies and when you're using ranged weapons. And this is something that you can get later on, but when you do come to where you have extra skill points to spend, this is a good one to get. Uh, it just kind of gives you that little extra boost. So that's the skill tree. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. I want to just go over quickly some of the weapons, armor, those sorts of things that you guys can get um, that I think are helpful as well. Now in general, let me take a look at the map. In general, uh, what I find is as you work your way through the map, you're going to naturally pick up better armor, better weapons. Um, so one thing that I think that <clears throat> you should always have is you should always have headgear, you should always have armor, pants, and boots. The things that are going to change is going to be your main hand, which is where my slingshot is equipped, and the offhand, which has nothing equipped for me. Now the reason that you should have the four center ones is because that's just going to improve your armor, your power, all sorts of different things. Now, I remember when I started the game, I did mostly combat. And so what I did was I grabbed some sort of sword or, you know, close range weapon, and then I had a shield. Now, for shields, as, as far as shields go, there is a shield that you can get from a quest, I believe, but there's also a shield you can buy here, and it's pretty cheap. It's only 20 coins. Uh, 10 defense and 7 block ability, which is pretty good. And so what I would do early on is I would grab that shield, and then I would find the best weapon that I could as I progressed through the levels. Um, the way that I determined which weapon was best is basically I took the... the I compared which weapon had the most points uh, attributed to it. So for example, if one weapon had 5 power and three defense, that would be a total of eight. Now, maybe there's another weapon that has, you know, four power, 
but it has like eight defense, you know, that's 12. So I might decrease the power, but my overall points for that weapon is higher. And so that's kind of what I would use. Um, the other reason why I used combat at the start is because there weren't a ton of good ranged weapons. And I didn't really want to use arrows. You use like a bow and arrow because arrows run out. So one thing though that did change is if you are able to get so this imp chieftain here, he has that slingshot. If you're able to get to the slingshot, um, that can be really helpful because it doesn't require any ammo. Really useful. Now there is another slingshot. Um, let me see if I can find it right here. This, so this brat has a slingshot. Um, the slingshot, the reason I didn't use ranged early on is because I really liked the extra defense and power that a shield would offer. Um, so you have that wooden shield to start. Uh, the last, the second shield you can probably get is this uh, iron looking shield, metal shield here in Pirate's Cove. Um, and so grabbing that can be really helpful. But really the main idea that you want to do with armor is the only choice you have to make other than equipping the best armor that you have is whether or not you want to do combat or ranged. Now I would do combat quite a bit. Um, once I got that to level 50, I think I switched to ranged because of that, um, because of the dual talent perk in the skill tree. I wanted to get both my levels to 50. Um, and that's kind of when I switched to ranged. And then what I found is that range was really effective, especially against enemies that were not ranged because then they would have to wait longer in order to attack. So I hope that that is helpful. Um, you know, I'll make more videos. There's not a ton of content to make. Um, I'm looking forward to the next update. Um, I'll leave this screen here just on the end here so you can see all of the stats that I have. Um, you can see I got 90 combat, 99 ranged. Uh, the way that I played it, just to reiterate, is I started with combat. I worked my way to get 50 combat. Once I got 50 combat for the level there, I switched over to ranged. Um, this game is pretty good at, if you just play it, you're going to be guaranteed to level up. You know, you could you could do your skill tree in any order you want, and you would still be just fine, because you're going to get to a point where you're just going to become pretty powerful to take on any enemy. But anyway, I hope that that helps, and uh, yeah, I'll probably make another video sometime in the next week or two.